Hello everyone, my name is Thomas White and this is Thomas Writes. Today I'm going to be talking about the original by Brandon Sanderson and Mary Robinette Cole. This book was published as an audio exclusive back in 2020. I picked up this book because a number of the booktubers that I follow have sung its praises. Also, I really enjoy Brandon Sanderson's writing style. And I also really like Mary Robinette Cole's contributions to the Writing Excuses podcast. It's a very good podcast, just giving short little tidbits of writing advice from authors who are especially experienced in the fields of fantasy and sci-fi writing. The Goodreads description for this book says, A sci-fi thriller set in a world where one woman fights to know her true identity and survive the forces that threaten her very existence. I read the premise for you because frankly, I think it is all that any reader needs to know before going into this book. This book is very much reliant upon its mystery element, its twists and its turns, and so I think it's best to go into it without any prior knowledge of what the story is really about. Starting off with my positives about the book, I think that Brandon Sanderson in particular really contributes to the world building being so good in this book. Even though this book is technically a novella, it's only a three hour listen, very short, it is able to pack so much world building into relatively few scenes. There's particularly a scene at a nightclub and then a scene at a park which are very well written, which gives you a lot of insight into the culture of this future that these authors have envisioned. This book kind of starts off giving you this very utopian look at the future that it envisions, but the more the story progresses, you start to see that this utopian world is really more of a dystopian one. And so the world building aspects of this book are very interesting for that sudden revelation that you get towards the end. This book also handles its mystery element very well. It kept me guessing the whole time. And I've heard some people say they thought that the big plot twist at the end was pretty predictable. I actually thought it was pretty good. It caught me off guard. And I thought once again added to the world of this book in some pretty substantial ways. This book deals with a lot of themes revolving around cloning, memory manipulation, government oversight, a surveillance state, a lot of things that are covered in a lot of other sci-fi dystopian novels, but I think this one does so in a way that helps it stand out from the rest of the crowd. It doesn't feel like it's really ripping off of anything else, rather just taking some elements from Philip K. Dick, from A Brave New World, and combining it in this way that makes it very much have its own identity. Also, the action scenes in this book are very well written. The way it's written is just very snappy. It, it all happens very quick, but you're still able to keep track of what's going on in a pretty decent way. And the narration overall is very solid. Julia Whelan, I think that's how you say your name, or Whelan, did the narration for this book. And she does a very good job with the performance, especially with the lead character. She conveys the appropriate amount of emotion depending on what the scene is. She's able to get angry in a very believable way, she's able to sound intimidating when she needs to be, and she's able to sound very sorrowful when she needs to be. Also, the way this book ends is very much appropriate for the kind of story that's being told. Without spoiling anything, it's one of those endings that will leave you thinking, and it's one that makes me want to reread this book so that I kind of fully understand the context of what everything was building towards. Honestly, the only big negative that I have for this book is I think it could have been turned into a full-fledged novel. I think the novella length helps its pacing, but we don't get as much of the world building as I personally would have liked for this kind of story. As a one-off novella, it works, but honestly, this is one of those books that just kind of left me wanting a little bit more. There was just enough missing that I felt like we could have expanded more on the world, we could have learned a bit more about the characters. There are a lot of characters introduced in this book, and I don't remember all of their names because 
it's all very truncated, it's all very short, and so I would have liked more expansion on the side characters as well as the world. But honestly, if my only critique is I wish the book had been longer, then it shows you how good of a book it really is. Overall, the original is a really solid sci-fi book that I think really could have used a bit more expansion in certain aspects. But overall, the pacing is good, the characters are good, the world is decently fleshed out, and it ends on a really good plot twist that I think will have readers scratching their heads in a good way. I'm going to give this book 4 out of 5 stars. I do hope we get to see more of the world that was established in this book, and I hope Brandon Sanderson and Mary Robinette Cole team up more often, because I thought this was a pretty solid, fun read. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to like and subscribe, and comment down below on your own thoughts on the original, and what other sci-fi dystopian books you really enjoy. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.